Smith is a Corsair. You know this plane, but you don't know me. Still, we're not strangers. I'm a Marine fighter pilot, and I've got something on my mind. Well, it's nothing important. It's just that I thought you might like to know what gives with us. Sort of fix it up so you can get a picture, a slice of life from this end of the world. I was among the first to arrive in the South Pacific, more than 6,000 miles away from home. Now, do you remember me? Sure, I thought you would. A lot of Japs have come to know me, too. Only we've met in a hailstorm, and the hail was 50 caliber bullets. And the storm was coming from six machine guns. You know, there isn't one of us here in the lonely Pacific who doesn't love his plane. Out here, she's more important to us than the gal back home. We've learned to live her kind of life, talk her language, understand her moves. We can sense every throb of her 2,000 horsepower heart. Well, she's some lady. Smooth as scotch, twice as easy. Now that you know how a pilot is, he's got to know everything his plane can do. I wish you could have seen us out here putting these babies through their paces. We went the limit and then some. But there are times when you got to forget the lady. We've got a lot of interests out here. Yes, sir. We can run the gamut from A to B. For instance, we lounge. Yep, just lounge. Best sport in the world. And then there's uh, volleyball. That's for the athletic type. There's also dominoes. How do you like that? African dominoes in the South Pacific, the natives know as much about Africa as they know about the New York Yankees. But every day is made stay out, and the scuttlebutt flies thick and fast around the GI tubs. And while we're just shooting the breeze about the distance of near beer, the ground crews are busy. The planes get their wings mended, their motors tuned, radios kept in shape, all their parts checked, machine guns aligned, instruments tested. Maybe you heard differently, but uh, flyers eat too. Next to a letter from home or dreaming of a girlfriend, chow comes first. Yeah, we got hot food prepared by the chief chef, Louis de Ritz. The plane eats clean oil, and the zero eats bullets. Best diet in the world for them. And then, every day, most of the time, when you're hitting the spuds and beef, it happens. Zeros, a flock of them, 15 or 20 of them. High, coming in out of the sun. Our radar has picked them up. Your heart turns a flip-flop and your guts tighten. There's only one thing in your mind now. How will it be today? Will our lady stand up? Will she be fast enough today? How will she move her hips out there with the air spin? Most of all, what about the firepower? How will it stack up against the zero? While the skipper, Major Greg Weissenberger, gives us the lowdown on the approaching enemy, the ground crew is out warming up the planes. They're coming in from the west, 23 of them. Altitude about 14,000. Use the regular formation. Everything understood? Okay, good luck. Shove off. Think about a lot of things as you climb into your plane. For a second there, you're not so sure. Then you're inside and your confidence returns. She feels good, your baby. The panel is familiar. You know where the instruments are. She responds to the touch. She's contented and ready. The feel of the engine tells you that. You swing out into line with your propeller banging hell out of the air. There's Greg on one side and Thomas on the other. Next, there's the Fabio grinning, always grinning. Down the line, there's Hanson and Leary and Winnie and the others. Same gang, same plane, same enemy. And then you're moving along the steel matting. She's eager. When she feels that matting, she knows what's coming. And now the matting looks like a bleary-eyed river. And then you're up, and she lets loose a howl of glory right from the belly. And if you don't look out, she'll run away from you. 
All at your back she is, trim, hot, angry, ready and spoiling for a fight. It doesn't take long, then. Seconds. At first, they're specs, snaps of death in formation. Uh, no suckers, those chaps. No, sir. They got good planes, too. Fast. Yeah, and plenty maneuverable. It takes a good plane to outfight the Zero, and my lady is just that. She'll outfight and outrun anything in the skies. The toughest thing to do is to wait. But you do. You fight the Marine Corps way. So you throw and punches until you can hit the enemy. So you wait. And then you see him coming into your sights. And your sweetheart opens her lips and she talks. Yeah, she talks loud and fast. Faster than anything the enemy ever heard before. And when you see that first zero spreader, you know this day will be like the others. Your honey will bring you through. You know what the plane can do, and the Japs know too. For a while, they keep coming, sometimes head on, aiming for your nose, their guns blazing. But you find them, smash them, destroy them before they can slip away. Sometimes they try to escape. They'll dive for the ocean to make you think they're hit. And you follow them down, puncturing the air with fire. And the fire finds the zero and reduces it to nothing. After a while, the Jap decides the weather isn't so good and that it better get the hell out of there anyway. So you chase them for a while, and then you turn back. And all the way, you're thinking that the box score is up. Yep, for our Hellhawk squadron, it's been 102 zeros. And remember this, we're just getting started. When do we really get going? Then you buzz the field. That means everything's okay. Start dealing the next poker hand. Well, maybe it's not in the books, but what the hell, we're writing the books and we feel pretty good. So we try a couple of new ones, sort of let our lady's hair down. Not a groan, not a complaint. She loves it just as much as we do. We may play a little in the air, but we know our job is strictly business. It's built on facts and figures. We know our planes, and we know the enemy. Now the ground crew takes over. Refuel, clean and load the guns, patch up the battle wounds. Meanwhile, we're giving the old man a recount of the day's work. First, is everybody here? Greg? Here, sir. Thomas? Here, sir. Fabio? We look around. The old man goes right on checking off the names. Leary? McCleary? Voto? Winia? But what about the Fabio? You miss his grinning face, and you get a sticky feeling high up in the chest. And then it sags and drops into your belly and stays there, choking off the breath. You think there isn't a lousy chap in the world who could have gotten Fab. Not him. Not Fab who brought his plane back minus 46 inches of wingtip. Suddenly, you see a funny look in the old man's eyes. His arm throws your attention to a plane. To Fabio, number 19. He's coming in. He's all there. You can tell that by the way he sets her down. that grin, too. Fab is back. He's checked off, and you find out you're hungry. And that's because you never finished your chow. And that's about all, I guess. Keep them coming. Fill the sky with the heartthrob of our engines, and we'll set our wheels down on the streets of Tokyo. What's that I had in my mind? Well, I just wanted to say thanks. Thanks for everything. The pleasure is all ours.